Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator and head witch of Bahati Life Apothecary. I'm a professional tarot astrologer and intuitive reader. As you can tell by the title in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Gemini lunar eclipse, which, to be honest, already happened mad early this morning. I think it was roughly between 2 a.m. I think is, well, I have the chart pulled for 2.22 a.m., but you guys know I pull the charts so for myself, and I just kind of wiggle the chart around in order to get it as exact as possible, but for the sake of this video, um, I do have the chart pulled up for 2.22 a.m. So let's go ahead and talk about what the chart is showing, what the energy is showing, what is it you can expect, and also any intuitive messages that are coming through. Um, and I really am feeling as though most of the intuitive messages that I will be feeling may be coming from the tarot cards that I'll be working with this afternoon. I will link them down below, but if you are curious and asking about them, it is the African American Tarot, which is one of my favorite tarot decks, and actually one of the decks that I don't share. So the reason why I don't share is because I have some decks that are more personal usage for me and more intimate. So my more uh, tight, intimate group, my core group, so my friends, my mom, um, myself, but today I really felt called to kind of share this with you guys. Let me know if you guys have your own deck that you don't share with the world. Like maybe you would shuffle for friends and family with an, another deck or maybe clients or whatever, but you have one deck that you just keep on reserve just for you, just for your own purposes and you just don't. It's not that you don't want to share, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things that just is all yours. All right, let me know down in the comments, but also if you guys hear any noise in the background, I do have laundry going just because this Gemini lunar eclipse energy has me getting like running a mile a minute. So many like small odds and ends things that is that I want to do, some chores, stuff like that around the house that I will be working on, including doing laundry. So I don't know about you, but I actually love the smell of laundry detergent. So it's just such a vibe in here this afternoon. Normally it smells like incense. Look, I'm even talking a lot right now, but normally it smells like incense, but right now it smells like laundry detergent. So, all right, so first things first, what's standing out to me for the eclipse is the fact that it's happening the sun in Gemini. Gemini. So Gemini is, like I said, and kind of like how I'm coming across right now, it's very energetic, it's very curious, it talks a lot, it says a lot, it thinks a lot. There's a lot of things going on in the energy of its mind and the energy of its, its vibe, the energy around it. It's curious, it's explorative, it asks questions. Um, you know, Gemini is one of the most uh, curious, explorative type signs, um, very gregarious, outgoing for the most part. Um, and what, what, not only what stands out to me with this eclipse is that level of energy, is the fact that the, you know, the, the moon is sitting in the sign of Gemini and that energy is being highlighted, but we also have the north node sitting in the sign of Gemini. As I'm looking at the eclipse, the moon has my full attention, of course, but directly opposite that, which creates the eclipse, the sun is sitting in the sign of Sagittarius. And one thing that's really standing out to me is this idea of information sharing, the, the type of news, gossip, media information that is that we're receiving. There is this hyper focus on the world or you getting to the fact of the matter, getting to the real, ripe, raw source of information. We are no longer, especially with Neptune now moving to the sign of Pisces, or having been moving to the sign of uh, Pisces, we have been lied to in a long time, for, for a long, long time. This is generationally like long, like longevity, meaning that this is not something brand new, but it's something that is being uncovered and revealed to us in 2020. So we are looking at how, especially with um, Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter moving to the side of Capricorn as well, um, we are looking at how people have used government, use politics, use business in order to control and to manipulate the masses. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not um, my opinions. This is strictly 100% astrology that is that I'm working with. Um, I know some people get offended because of the climate that we're in in this, this year, but I have never brought my personal opinions to the YouTube channel. 
I'm just showing you guys and sharing with you guys exactly what it is that I see within the astrology chart and I'm translating and transferring that information over to you always authentically and you know um, uh, as all the information that it is that I can gain and that I can share and that I've learned over time is what I'm passing over to you guys this is never my opinion so anyways um, yeah, so at this time of the eclipse, which had already happened, but the energy is going to be felt for months after this point. So at the time, that, at the time of me filming right now, it's 1 o'clock p.m., literally on the dot, Eastern Standard Time on November 30th, the time of the eclipse. But what is that we can expect from now, three to six months from now, is this heightened focus on where are we getting our information from? Where are we getting our news from? Can I believe it? Can I trust it? And this information, this question that is that we have says, okay, I need details, I need credentials, I need credits. Where did you get this? And then you ask further questions in order to get to the root of it, the, the depth of it. You have realized over time that in some areas of your life, uh, you are not, maybe not intentionally, but some people do do it intentionally. We have to call a spade a spade. Some people's intentions are positive and some people's intentions are bad, or everyone has their own ulterior motive for doing whatever it is that they're doing, whether it be our business, our government, or something as intimate as your child crying because they want a cookie. At the end of the day, there is an ulterior motive for what it is that they're doing, and ultimately it's considered manipulation, meaning that they're doing this because they want this. So at the time of this eclipse, that's what is really being heightened um, for us is information sharing, quality of information, and asking the right questions. What are they saying? What are they not saying? What are you saying? What are you not saying? The other thing that's standing out to me is the idea of play. So wisdom is something that is truly that's coming through right now. Um, and also educational exploration, spiritual exploration, definitely during 2020 times, but also during this eclipse. So what it is I'm seeing is people learning and finally discovering and finally believing and trusting the fact that wisdom doesn't look only one way. Wisdom doesn't mean that you are sitting still, that you have gray hair, that you have wrinkles on your face, and that you're walking with a wooden stick. Wisdom can look like a child playing, you know, uh, uh, carelessly or, you know, without, you know, not to say recklessly, but a child playing by in the park, you know, with sticks and toys and playing with flowers. You know, wisdom, if you ask that child, if you talk to that child, you will find wisdom there. Um, wisdom can look like the person that you least expect wisdom to come from. Wisdom is not only one thing. Wisdom can be playful. Wisdom can be serious. So these are some things that are coming through at the time of the eclipse is being really open-minded to hearing different messages, considering them versus shutting them down because of what they look like, because of what you expect it to be. This is one of those eclipses that starts like can be really life well will be life changing because it opens the door in a mindset not only in your intimate life but in our world that is open to finally considering the fact that wisdom and intelligence higher education can look like something other than it has been that means that culturally well that means that we can learn from so many different cultures and so many different experiences from storytelling that's what I went back to was information sh information sharing with the Gemini, with the Gemini energy. What stories have been told throughout different cultures, different religions, different belief systems, different communities. Listen to them and learn from them instead of being like, oh, that's not accessible to me or oh, no, I can't learn from that. Wisdom does not look like, again, the sage that is, you know, sitting on top of a mountain. It could be the person that you pass going up to the mountain. It could be being still, it could be very active. So be very, very open to where wisdom, information, education can come from and where inspiration is going to come to you, where it, where it will reach you. The other thing that is coming through to me, oh, okay, wow, is a uh, perspective. So our sometimes our brains, myself included, we all have to be very open to the fact that we do not know all. The wise, the wisest man or woman knows that they do not know everything. So with this eclipse, this is one of those times where you want to consider different perspectives, different viewpoints. This is where you're going to have to challenge your own ego, your own identity, your own uh, way of thinking and doing things. 
it could be exactly what it was I was saying is that where wisdom and intelligence is going to come from can be a source that you may not have normally considered or that you may not have trusted or you may not have respected. So at the time of this eclipse, I really want to challenge you again to connect with different, to connect with the other, to connect with someone. Some of you guys will even say something very judgmental is what's coming through. Like, let's say there's someone who has addiction problems. Let's say there's someone from a totally different culture from you that you think is um, not as civilized. You know what I mean? Like just, and that's how, that's how judgmental and dogmatic this thinking is. At the time of me filming this video and at the time of this eclipse, Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter are working to break down this dogmatic thinking, this ritualistic thinking, this, this is the only way that we can do it. This is the only way that it can be. This is not only this global mindset. It's also the mindset that you have for yourself, your self-limiting beliefs that are so rigid, so ingrained in you that the universe has been working for the last year and then some to break down with it within you. It's been generationally cursed, like a, a curse. It's been crippling. It has been handicapping physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So at the time of this eclipse, consider all of the potential, consider all of the options. For some of you guys, intuitively, you need to receive this message, which is it is time for you to get into publishing. It is time for you to write that book. It is time for you to get that idea into writing, into a contractual agreement and explore your options and see who would be interested in working with you, who would be interested in locking arms with you. All right, so that's something that's coming through. Look, Knight of, Knight of Swords just jump, jumped out. Knight of Swords means, again, that's really about information, but it's also about, you know, running to the source. It's really about finding the source. It's about connecting to different sources and then having conversations with them that ultimately will lead to, look, we have some more energy here with the Page of, page of Wands. Lots of fire, lots of air. Um, ultimately will lead into contractual agreements, lifelong engagements, money, abundance, this lack mentality, you guys. That's the thing that is, some of you guys are breaking out of is this less than lack mentality. You got, some, some people have been settling for less, wanting more, but just keep on agreeing to, to certain things or, 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 or are afraid to ask the hard questions that would allow someone to come in to invest in them and at, at least shine a light on them so that someone can see your gift, so that someone can see your light. At the time of the eclipse, this is, time, this is the time for you to push yourself out there, to usher yourself out into the world and say, listen, I'm not going to allow my wounds that cripple me, especially with Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries, while part of fortune is moving through Aries and Mars is moving through the sign of Aries. I'm not going to allow these old beliefs, these old wounds to stop me from and hinder me from putting myself out there and being a leader and advocate for my own self, for my community, for my family, for my children, for my marriage, for my business. Whatever it is that, it is that you are going to, whatever it is that you are headed to, whatever it is that you are getting these downloads, this information sharing, that's where you know, we are working to dismantle um, and to disarm, it, disarm, disarm her and disrobe these self-limiting uh, beliefs that ultimately end up becoming, I don't say pro prophecies, but these things that is that you are speaking over yourself that because you are speaking them, because you won't allow yourself to see through your third eye something different from yourself, something different for yourself that is all you will ever achieve so even though it's not a prophecy from the divine it's a prophecy that you speak over your life so make sure that the words that you are speaking the information that you're sharing the things that is that you're thinking are prophecies and visions that are pros prosperous that are budding that are life-giving that give you vitality life energy and don't expect and don't accept anything that takes away from this you know grand scale beautiful, vibrant, lush vision that is that you have for yourself. Play, like I said before you guys, play is everything. We have three of cups here, just as I was saying play, seven of cups reversed, eight of cups reversed, the devil card, ace of cups is very playful, ten of wands, three of wands, queen of wands. She understands that her ability to be vital, to be thriving, is in her ability to be free and to play and to be authentic. One of the words that just came through for me for all of us is the word audience. When I was t saying the word authentic, um, and play. Some of you guys actually do better when you step into this role and you 
know that there is an audience that's watching you. Something about stepping into this character, whoever that is, gives you strength and empowers you to do the things that it is that you, yourself, maybe wouldn't feel comfortable doing, but when you step into this role of this character, you do do it, and you make it a, like, a, like a scene. It kind of reminds me of Beyonce being a Virgo, she's being shy, but then when she's on stage, she channels this role before she steps in front of the audience. And the name of that character is, comment now down, down below, Sasha Fierce, right? Sasha Fierce. So if you know what it is that I'm talking about, throw a hot heart down in the comment or the name Sasha Fierce. But when she does that, she channels a different form. She channels a different energy. She channels a different character. It's still Beyonce, but is it though? It's someone who is capable of putting on an amazing show, of being the best known for her craft, known for her excellence within her craft. And then at the end of the day, she turns that off and she goes back to being Beyonce, a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, etc., etc. So that's what something that's coming through you guys is that there might be something that you need to embody. You might need to name her or name him, which is this this stage persona or this personality that it is that does the things that it is that you might not you might not necessarily feel comfortable doing, but he, she can and will and will dominate as they're doing it. The next thing that I am also getting in the same, because I'm working with energy, you guys, so the same thing that could be a positive could also be a, a challenge. So some of you guys are so accustomed to putting on a front by only presenting the character side of yourself. Mercury and Scorpio, Venus and Scorpio says that in order for you to be authentic and true to your your nature and true to your character, stop putting on this stage front and allow yourself to bloom and blossom, being vulnerable, being pure, whoever it is that you are. Now, I understand that there's, those are two entirely different messages for two entirely, entirely different populations, but the reason why I'm saying that again is because energy, how it, how it is expressed from the planets down here on Earth can show it, will reveal itself in the way that it feels most comfortable showing up. And because this is a general, a very specific message for a general audience, it can be tough for me to pinpoint exactly who out of the hundreds and hundreds, thousands, whatever followers that it is I have on my YouTube channel or people who will come across this video, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly who this message will go to. So follow your intuition, follow your vibes. But either way, what is I'm seeing is the element of play, the element of um, authenticity, the I'm seeing emboldened energy is what is the word that's coming through. So just knowing yourself, knowing your worth, knowing your value, knowing your path, your, your path and your power, speaking your voice, but also, you know, being true, being really true to your to your nature, being free, be, being able to freely express yourself, being able to freely express and explore different avenues of growth, different spiritual practices, different rituals, different information. And finally, at the time of the eclipse, setting the intention that whatever this is that you're going to be sharing, gift wrapping and sharing with the world, that it's going to be remarkable, that it's going to be brilliant, that's going to be magnificent, it's going to be totally worth it. I hope this message makes sense to you guys. Let me know down in the comments if it resonates. Until then, make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!